says going in the video. <laughs> no. Christo friends, welcome back to Opus LNI where it's costume season. Honestly, it's always costume season here, but October is extra costumey. My original plan was to make a historically accurate version of a certain movie costume, but even though the WGA has come to a strike ending agreement, SAG-AFTRA has not, and I don't feel comfortable making that costume right now. Maybe sometime in the future. But that doesn't mean I was willing to let go of the gist of my plan. The movie outfit drew heavily on the Italian Renaissance, and when Tornado let me know that they had outgrown the Viking capsule wardrobe I made them before Gulf War, and could I please make them something a little more fancy? I knew exactly which direction to go in. My goals with this project were threefold. One, make an outfit that is fancy enough to satisfy tornado sensibilities that will grow along with them for at least six months. Two, use stash fabric and notions as much as possible. Three, ensure that the outfit is extremely washable. My kid is generally careful, but their favorite activity in the SEA is helping in the kitchen, which is an inherently grubby job. So everyone grab your cuppa and let me know in the comments what you're drinking. Oh, and what your Halloween costume is going to be if you're dressing up. Today, I've got Brooklyn Tea's Chocolate Mint, a seasonal blend that tastes exactly like Girl Scout cookies. It is delightful. Let's get into it. As always, we start with the underlayer, in this case a camicia, which is Italian for chemise or shift. It consists of four oversized rectangles that are gathered down at the low neckline and wrists to make that signature poofy sleeve look that the Italian Renaissance is known for. Instead of linen, I am opting to use a bleached cotton muslin. It's inexpensive, meets sensory needs, and while it isn't as breathable as linen, it is still a natural fiber that for the relatively few hot weather events the tornado attends will work just fine. The easiest way to get straight lines with muslin is to tear it, even though it means dealing with all of the stray threads. The pattern for the camicia consists of a front, a back, two sleeves, and two underarm gussets. The back is cut a few inches longer, in this case three, than the front piece. The sleeves are sewn to the body with the back seams sitting higher than the front by the same amount as the difference in length between front and back. This allows the front neckline to sit lower on the chest. The underarm gussets are inserted in the same way as other rectangular constructed garments and the side and sleeve seams are just sewn straight. Gores can be added at the sides if more fullness is required at the hem, but I didn't bother for this project. I'm continuing my policy of not hand finishing the seam allowances of Tornado's clothes since I have to replace them so often. The serger works just fine to prevent fraying. Once the seam allowances and raw edges are surged, I can move on to the neckline and cuffs. Historically, these would be gathered down and encased in bindings, but I want something that is easy and adjustable without having to fuss with closures at the wrists, so instead I'm opting for elastic. Sometimes I use a blunt large-eyed needle to thread elastic and sometimes a safety pin, it just depends on what I have handy. I am deliberately leaving extra length attached to the elastic though in order to be able to loosen it as tornado grows. Why the quotes? Well, a gamora is a basic Italian Renaissance dress. It consists of a fitted bodice, a full skirt, and fairly complicated sleeves. It was generally worn under a giorna, which is a sort of loose surcoat that's open in the front and sometimes on the sides and can be belted to show off the waist. 
The dress I'm making is a sort of fantastic amalgamation of both garments. It will have the fairly fitted bodice, high waist, and full skirt of a gamora, but the skirt will be open in the front like a jorna, showing off the kamicha instead of another gown. This is an intentional decision for a couple of different reasons. First, the outfit needs to be extremely easy to get into and out of. Getting dressed needs to not be a barrier to entry for Tornado. Second, this gown is made from a matte satin polyester that's been in my stash for ages, and while it is gorgeous and soft, I have to take temperature regulation into account, so that means making it as breezy as possible. And thirdly, my top priority with the design is making a pretty dress that makes them feel good and want to go to events, rather than strict historical accuracy. I've started with a bodice pattern I know fits, and I'm altering it to bring the waist up, the neckline down into a deep V, the shoulders narrowed, and finally, drafting out the dart in the back. I'll cut one layer of satin and one of muslin for lining, and then I can start sewing them together. I'm going to take a sort of hybrid approach between bag and flat lining with this garment for future adjustability. I'm going to start by bag lining each segment separately, sewing satin to lining at the neckline and arm size. Then I can trim and clip those seam allowances before turning all the pieces right side out and pressing them nice and flat. Because this is a new fabric, I am turning my iron down and testing a piece of scrap fabric before pressing the actual garment.
Once each piece is lined, turned, and pressed, I will finish the remaining raw edges, except the shoulders, by serging them. After that's done, I can sew the side seams and press those flat as well. Sewing them this way will allow me to let the side seams out as the tornado grows. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members and everyone who has supported the channel even once. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see the rest of the dress. For the skirt, I am cutting a rectangle three times the width of the bodice measurement and hemming the front edges with a simple double fold. Then I can attach the skirts to the bodice by using the divide and conquer method to create deep pleats all the way around. Since the top edge of the skirt is the selvage and the bottom of the bodice is serged, I can sew them together with no further finishing. This will again allow me to easily rip the seams to let out some fullness as necessary. After that, I can attach the shoulders together by folding the seam allowances to the inside of the back shoulders and tucking the front pieces inside that and felling them together all the way around that seam. Next, I'll sew on this decorative clasp that's also been in my Notion stash for years. The low neckline means that only one closure is needed. quick run test for swooshiness, Tornado gave it 9 out of 10 billows, and then it's time to mark the dress length and hem depth. I'm marking how much to cut off the skirt length. Yes, that is a hilariously deep hem. No, I will not apologize for it. Tornado is growing like a weed. And once that is cut off, I can mark where the hem will fold. Once the hem is sewn, the dress is finished.
Thanks for joining me today. Tornado is super happy with their new outfit and has already earmarked some more fabric for another one or two. If they keep this up, they'll have another wardrobe for Gulf War ready to go. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you'd like, and consider sharing this or any of my videos to social media. If you're interested in finding me on said social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links as well as link to my Kofi will all be in the description box below. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Will. Ha <laughs> ha